As a matter of fact, the intelligence people were telling the president that Iran had ceased work on the nuclear weapons. And now they're hyping weapons. that again. I was watching CNN this morning, and they cut to some female blonde-haired comedian. I, I missed her name. As if it was news. They go, let's cut to see what she says about Iran. And she's like, Ahmed Dinajade, how dare you say you want to nuke us and blow everything up? How dare you? We see through you, little man, little devil. And then she laughs. And I'm like, this is news now? When they always distort what he says, and I'm certainly not defending him or the mullahs or any of them over there. The point is, is that it's all being manufactured again. They're beating the war drums. Here's the big issue. Do you think they're going to hit them, or will it be sanctions first, or will they false flag, or where is this going? Well, it depends on how staunchly the only uh, reputable institution in our government stands up to this. I have a lot of admiration for Admiral Mullen. Uh, I think that uh, you know he's inclined and you know knee jerk to obey orders. But he and his predecessor, Admiral Fallon, you remember Fallon quit when he was CENTCOM commander uh, because he had said, we're not going to do Iran on my watch. And uh, it took several months, but uh, he was... Because he man. knows what will happen. We should talk about what will happen, the three different th scenarios if Iran gets hit. That's exactly right. You know, and one of them, you know, one of them says, well, Iran has the capability of closing the Straits of Hormuz. Now, okay, that's where like two-thirds of the oil that comes out of the oil-rich Middle East has to come through, okay? Now, what's, uh, what's Mullen say to that question? He says, yes, the Iranians have the capability of closing the streets, but, but we can reopen them. Well, yeah. How are they going to reopen them? Send the Marine Division into the cliffs overlooking the Straits of Hormuz? Give me a break. Where when they've got 12,000 sunburned missiles aiming down. Yeah, and where is he going to get the Marine uh, Division? They're all, they're all already exhausted in, in uh, Afghanistan, and some of them left in Iraq. So, you know, it, this all has a degree of unreality. And when I see Senator uh, Kit Bond of Missouri and John Kyle uh, talking about, we need regime change, we need regime change in Iran because they're such a threat to Israel, well, you know, that just reminds me of the old saw about, uh, you know, when they offered uh, to make Israel uh, the 51st state of the United States, Israel refused. You know why, Alex? Well, no, why? Because then they'd only have two senators. <laughs> oh, man. I, you know, this is just insane. So what's the intel you're getting? Are they planning to hit Iran or, or are they just going to have sanctions? Where is this going? I think Netanyahu is chafing at the bit. Uh, and I think Obama is under great pressure from the Likud lobby and from those still in the White House who uh, have great difficulty distinguishing between what they perceive to be the strategic interests of Israel on the one hand and uh, those of the United States on the other. I, I hope, and that's what it is, a hope, uh, it's just a little bit more than, an, a little less than an expectation that Obama will stand up to this. This would be a ruinous war. This would be worse than the way he contemplates doing in Afghanistan. This would be bedlam. And I think that as, as long as he listens to people like Mullen, that he'll be restrained. Final segment with Ray McGovern straight ahead. Uh, I want to get his take on the Russia situation, where he thinks Afghanistan's going. I just wish we could stop having all these wars. I mean, our government has overthrown Iran repeatedly. They're constantly meddling inside their nation. We've really done this country wrong, folks. And now they're saying they're going to nuke us. I mean, it's just pure bull. Do you understand how dark it is? How far down the line we are? How late it is? Ray McGovern is our guest. Final segment. Ray, what about the rest of the world, geopolitically? What's going on? Well, what's going on is the rest of the world is looking at us and kind of shaking uh, shaking its head. Um, the Russians and the Chinese and the Indians are the big players, of course. And as they watch what we're trying to do in Afghanistan, uh, you know, they're sort of uh, <laughs> shrugging their shoulders and saying, well, be our guest. You know, we all tried that in Afghanistan. We all failed, going back to... 
you know, going back to Alexander the Great, not to mention Chinggis Khan and uh, the Persians and the Indians and uh, the British and the Russians, uh, go ahead, you know, waste your, your military. And with respect to uh, with Iran, uh, you know, the Russians used to care a great deal about what happened on their soft uh, southern underbelly, uh, but they seem almost cavalier with respect to Iranian plans. And I think part of that has to do with the fact that they they don't have Israel as their, quote, ally, end quote. Now, what are these quotes? Well, because 99% of the American people believe that Israel is an ally of the United States. That's wrong. An alliance requires a treaty. There is no mutual defense treaty between the United States and Israel. And the reason there is none is because treaties require internationally recognized boundaries, and Israel is in possession for over 60 years now. No, 60 years from 67 on till now, whatever the math is, uh, of the occupied territories, West Bank, East Jerusalem, and the Gaza Strip. And Israel, the last thing it wants is to have any international body uh, draw the borders back to where they used to be. So there is no alliance, and yet uh, we proceed, and the media characterizes our relationship with Israel as an alliance. Our policymakers treat it that way. But Russia, <laughs> Russia sits back and laughs and says, well, if they do something really idiotic, if they close the Straits of Hormuz, guess who benefits? Who benefits? Russia. Russia has got all the oil, you know. Man, that the price of oil, you know, we'll be able to have a villa, we'll have a dacha for each uh, for each little uh, uh, worker in the in the Russia. Is that why Russia met with Netanyahu secretly a month ago and has now said we, they support sanctions against Iran? Well, you know, Russia plays a very clever game. You know, they express uh, concern about this and then they go ahead. Now, with Netanyahu, uh, they are restraining uh, influence although they don't care as much as we do. So uh, when Netanyahu goes up there, what you expect him to get is not approval for a strike on Iran, but some sort of reassurance that, for example, the Russians won't, won't sell sophisticated uh, missiles to defend the Iranian uh, uh, sites there, the enrichment sites. So, uh, you know, last year, uh, Ehud Olmert went to, to Moscow, and uh, he was summoned there, and the Russians warned him in similarly definitive terms, like Admiral Mullen, don't even think of attacking Iran. So the, the Russians have no real incentive for that kind of attack, but if it right. happens, uh, you know, they're going to be right. the big beneficiary by uh, you know, right. doubling the, the price of their Got to cut you off. We're almost out of time in the last minute. Do you think it's sanctions or an attack? I mean, if you had to make a dead reckoning again, do you think they're going to hit Iran in the next year or two? Uh, gosh, uh, I don't know, Alex. It will depend on how this thing plays out. There will be sanctions first, uh, but uh, there's great pressure for an attack, and I would not rule out the likelihood that Israel would be given a nod by somebody in the White House and go ahead and do it and force our hand. And then Iran will go absolutely wild. Oh, yeah. It'll be bedlam. And we'll suffer great attrition for our own troops in the area. Ray McGovern, thank you for your time. You're most welcome.